Hi, everybody. My name is Jarrett Dapier. I am a writer for children and for teens, and I am the author of a book called Mr. Watson's Chickens, which is the book you see behind me here. I'm also the author of a book called Jazz for Lunch, which is the book that I'm going to read to you today. Thank you so much for listening to my story and, and having me in your classroom. I'm really excited to be here. Even if it's pre-recorded, I'm glad to be with you right now. So let's jump right into the story. Jazz for Lunch is a book that I wrote. Uh, again, my name is Jarrett Dapier, but I didn't draw the pictures. The pictures are by an artist named Eugenia Mello. Eugenia is from South America. She was born in Argentina, and before she was 18, she lived in Argentina, Peru, Colombia, and Venezuela before moving back to Argentina and then to New York City, where she lives now in Brooklyn with her husband. So Eugenia did all of the illustrations. I wrote the words in this story. And Jazz for Lunch is a story about a boy and his auntie and a special uh, day of cooking that they share together and how the music of jazz really shows them how to be creative and imaginative in the kitchen. And they discover that cooking together and being together makes its own kind of music, just like jazz uh, when musicians play it together. So I'm gonna read it to you now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen so that I don't have to hold up the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And here it is. All right, I'm really excited about this. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these things here. I'm gonna pull that away. Get rid of my face, okay. So that's the cover of the book, Jarrett Dapier and you, Eugenia's Mellows Jazz for Lunch. That's the cover and that's Junior there and Auntie playing a bunch of food like the food is an instrument. If you were to read this book and take off the dust jacket, which is the covering over the top of the book, you would see Sorry. This on the underside of the dust jacket. I love this so much because I'm a big fan of records. I collect tons and tons of records. I'm going to show you one here. This is one of my favorites. And sometimes when I do author events, I like to play it for the kids. Uh, or any students who are listening. This is Ella Fitzgerald's Lost Berlin Tapes. And Ella Fitzgerald is one of my favorite jazz musicians ever. I love everything about her voice and everything about her work. And I love to listen to Ella on record, on vinyl. So some of you might, probably a bunch of you, might have record players at home. This is a record. And I like to listen to um, jazz on vinyl. I think it's the best way to listen to it. It just sounds so good. So on the right there, you've got a record that has the name of the book. And then on the left, Eugenia made an empty dinner plate. And I just love the way those two echo each other and look like each other. And you'll understand more about why she did that as we get into the story. So let's do it. Let's read it. Want to? Okay. I'll tell you a little bit more about these little pictures and all of the words next to them when I'm done with the story. All right, jazz for lunch. Here we go. <clears throat> Strutting with my auntie Nina down to a club. We're going to hear some music and then eat some grub. Nina's there for lunch almost every other day. Musicians hit the stage and this is what they play. Jazz for lunch. The beast got soul. Jazz for lunch. Ham on a roll, jazz for lunch. The tunes got swing, jazz for lunch. Shout, dance, and sing. And I love this spread right here because number one. Okay, so Auntie brings Junior down to a club and he's never heard jazz music before. Look at his face right here. He is just surprised, happy, and a little excited and unsure about what's going on in this club. And what I also love, are the colors swirling 
on the stage and this spotlight on those musicians as they're jamming and just making wild, beautiful music. But Jun Junior notices something about the music and something else that's going on in the club. Peel of the trumpet and the zest of the hi-hat. Knives go chop, hear the sizzle of some bacon fat. Sounds of the kitchen and the music mixed together. Nina winks at me because we are birds of a feather. Jazz for lunch, the club's got soul. Jazz for lunch, eat a drum roll. Jazz for lunch, the food's got to swing. Jazz for lunch, shout, dance, and sing. And do you see how the cooks in the kitchen have a spotlight on them, just like the musicians on the stage? I love that Eugenia did that. It shows how both groups of people are working together to be creative and make something delicious and wonderful. There's a problem though. Wanna get up close or stuck in the back. I can't see the drums and I can't get a snack. Dancing dudes and ladies are stomping on my feet. Talking too loud and I can't stand the heat. Look at Junior's face there, he's not happy. So auntie, like any good babysitter or just family member who really pays attention to you and how you're feeling, she takes him out. Nina walks me out for the set is through, says, come by tomorrow, I got a surprise for you. I think that me and you, we could do something great. After what we just heard, I'm fitting to create. So the next day, Junior goes to auntie's house. The next day at Nina's place, we're both on the make. Throw some jazz on the stereo for heaven's sake. Now we got a rhythm kitchen, high fly and stomp, teaching me to cook. It's a hot house romp. You got Junior throwing the records on and Nina prepping in the kitchen. Jazz for lunch, playing food, steaming tunes. Jazz for lunch, stirring fats, licking spoons. Jazz for lunch, shaking cinnamon in the chili. Jazz for lunch, just salt peanuts, getting silly. So they're really getting into it now. And Junior just keeps up the rhymes and the rhythm as they start to make their dishes together. Bone in drumstick, cooking on the fly. Fresh new dishes, a jam session high. Nina's master chef and I'm her shorty baker. Second banana, Junior cook, boogie woogie booty shaker. Okay, boogie woogie booty shaker. He's really getting into it. Pit pat the peanut butter, slap on the jelly. Sweet potato, sweet potato, Philly Joe belly. Pizzicata, panna cotta, parmigiana cheese. Art Tatum tots and a hot Reuben Reeves. There's a, uh, this is one of my favorite spreads. Number one, because Nina is playing what looks like a big stalk of celery, like it's a trumpet. You've also got the kitty who's getting into the salad over here. And this, painting of the record and the music flowing out of it in swirling colors, I just think is beautiful. And this section, Pit Pat, the peanut butter slap on the jelly, I'll tell you a little bit more about why that's special to me after the story. Oops, it won't go to the next one. Hello. Hold on one sec. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, put your hands together now, make some noise. Like to introduce you to my nephew, Junior Cook. Make some meal of the drums, just take a look. And Junior's there going, me? And he's got a spotlight on it, just like in the club. Chick -tsch, chick -tsch, track, crash, flam, triplet pan, chick -tsch, chick -tsch, Joe Jones, drummer man, splash, cymbal, guacamole, hot buddy, rich pasole, salt, shaker, tambourine, Sid, catlet, nectarine. Look at his face in this picture. Eugenia modeled all of these pictures and the joy that he feels on his face in this picture after real jazz drummers like Art Blakey, Joe Jones, Max Roach and Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. Can't forget Gene Krupa. Have your teacher look those, those drummers up. Art Blakey is my favorite because he not only was a great band leader, but he was a great teacher to jazz musicians who would play with him. 
And even until he was an old man, he would bring in young jazz players to play with him. And they always felt like they were at home and they felt like they had a teacher who cared about them. And he's an incredible drummer. And he has one of my favorite quotes. He says, when in doubt, just roll. I like that a lot. He meant when you're in the middle of a song and you're drumming and you don't know where we are in the song or what the rhythm is and you sort of lost track, just play a drum roll and you'll get back on tune. You'll get back in the swing. But I like that as a, as a way to think about life. If something's getting in your way or something's really hanging you up and you're doubtful, you don't know what's going on, just roll. Just roll for a minute and see if you can get back on track. Art Blakey, he was a master. Now I want to tell you about the food that we made. We sliced it and diced it with the edge of a blade. We named every dish after favorite jazz greats. Now check out those hot eats upon your plates. So they made new dishes and they named them after Nina's favorite musicians. And here's what they came up with. Art Blakey Flaky and Thelonious Monkfish, a Nat King coleslaw, red hot pepper dish, Hoppin' John Coltrane, Art Pepper Steak, Billy Hollandaise Sauce, Dexter Gordon Cheesecake. All of these great musicians. They're just, they're just masters. They contributed so much to the world. And, and they're inspiring Junior and Auntie in the kitchen while they listen to their songs. Jazz for lunch, let it cool, let it cool. Jazz for lunch, keep it cool, keep it cool. Knock, knock, knock. Hey now, Auntie Nina, who's that knocking at the door? Do any of you have any ideas about who could be at the door? They've been cooking all day, just, just the two of them. Who's coming over? Do you notice all the colors and the swirls sort of flowing out from the door? Almost like there's someone special on the other side. Does anybody have any guesses about who it might be? Okay. Let's see if those of you who had guesses were right. Hey now, Auntie Nina, who's that knocking at the door? It's all the jazz cats from the club before. Woohoo! It's all the musicians from the stage. And Junior down here is just cheering, while Auntie, who I think maybe has a thing for the trumpet player, is happy also. And what happens after they all come into the, into the apartment? It's jazz for lunch, a rhythm jambalaya. Jazz for lunch, all in, bounce higher. Jazz for lunch, finger zinger freak lip. Jazz for lunch, Ella Bessie chip dip. Jazz for lunch. Chomp a trombone, crunch jazz for lunch. Eat a drum roll, munch jazz for lunch. We dance and we eat jazz for lunch. Hot food and fresh beats. All these people brought together to share food and music together, which is my favorite thing to do in the whole world, especially music. That's just, music is what I hear in my head and in my heart, especially drumming and rhythm all day long. And the party, it seems, the dinner spills out onto the fire escape. And some of the other residents in the building, they all, take, they all join in too, including this person down here on the piano. I love this spread. It's just, it's just, it's quiet because there are no words. But you can hear and feel how happy everyone is. Party's over, dinner's over, everyone went home. Junior has one last question. Hey, Nina, what's for dinner? Nina's not having it. Nina is ready for a nap. So is the kitty, you see the kitty? So that's jazz for lunch. And I promised I was gonna tell you about these. These are little biographies that I wrote about all of the musicians whose names are used in the story and whose names become names or parts of uh, different dishes and baked goods that Junior and Nina create. And 
the editor, when I wrote the book, I wrote all of the rhyming words that you just heard. And then I gave it to the editor and then she and Eugenia worked together for a long time and I didn't hear from them for a very long time. And I didn't know what was happening. And then the editor said, I think that we need some biographies written about the people in the book who were real jazz musicians and who Auntie loves so much. And so I thought, I don't wanna just write little boring biographies. I wanted to fit in with the book. And so I came up with the idea that the biographies in the book should sound a little bit like how a cool restaurant that's, that's just got some real style would describe their dishes on the menu. But instead of describing a dish, they're describing great musicians from the past. One of my favorites, like I said, is Ella Fitzgerald. The reason I love jazz music is because, well, so much. There's so much creativity in it, incredible American history in it. And it brings people together. That's certainly been true in my life. When I was young, my mom brought me to a jazz club in Chicago. I was eight years old and it was a jazz club that uh, you could go to during lunchtime to hear live jazz while you ate your lunch. And she brought me and my little sister, and it was the first time I ever heard live jazz, and it it always stuck with me. It Im imprinted on my brain as something special. And over the years, my brother, who was a drummer, he would play in jazz bands. He would give me CDs with uh, uh, CDs for Christmas with great great jazz musicians playing on them, and. My mom would tell me about concerts, shows she used to go to in the 60s in Chicago to see great jazz musicians like Ramsey Lewis, Jimmy Smith, and Miles Davis. And hearing those stories always stuck with me. And, and so all of you, I think you should go home tonight, wherever you live, and ask, ask your grown-up what music they remember from when they were little. And then ask them, what live music do they remember going to see and hear when they were little or a teenager or even when they were older in their 20s and 30s, but something, some kind of concert or show that they went to that they'll never forget. And ask them to tell you the story of that. It's important. It's important to know what art and music we've all seen and experienced and it's important to share that with others so ask your grown-ups what what music do they like what do they go to see because my mom I couldn't believe it went to see Jimmy Smith he's one of the great organ and piano players of jazz history and she'd seen him a number of times and when I grew older I met my wife and the first thing we ever talked about the first topic was Ella Fitzgerald because we found out that we both really loved Ella so I loved writing this bio, and this is what I wrote. Sometimes Ella Fitzgerald, Ella Fitzgerald sang made up words on the spot just to capture the joy and ouch she felt in her heart. This is called scatting, and it sounds the way bacon does when it crackles in a skillet. Ella's singing voice was a full breakfast, sweet syrup streaming down on waffles, glasses filled with a never-ending babbling O.J. Brook, and the sunniest sunny-side-up eggs trilling and floating like egg clouds. And like the best breakfasts, her voice brought millions of people together. Still does. And then I wrote this one down here about a great singer named Bessie Smith. And Bessie Smith sang the blues with the fullness of her being. When she carried notes, her voice trilled like perfect crimps in a scrumptious pie crust. She never truly crossed over into the jazz world, but she's included here because you can't bake a pie without the crust, and there's no jazz without the blues. So she was a blues singer, and the blues kind of came before jazz, and jazz grew out of the blues. But what I love about jazz, too, is that it's the original American art form. 
It was created by Black Americans, some of them who had been formerly enslaved, who made this free, wonderful, wild, and creative music and created it together and played it for the world and changed the world. It's the original American art form and the original American art form was created by Black Americans. And its whole history is just beautiful and wonderful. And it grew out of many forces, many different, many different um, places. Started in New Orleans, grew to St. Louis, to Chicago, Kansas City, New York City. All of these became important jazz hubs. So being a Chicago boy, I love it. Um, but also I had to mention the blues because the blues, a lot of people like to say was founded in Chicago or started in Chicago. It's not true. It started down South in Louisiana, but um, we've got a lot of great blues guitarists and musicians that are either still here um, or uh, made their music while they were here. Um, I just wanna share one more with you and then I'll be done. Um, and I also wanted to share with you the, the um, back of the book because one great thing that Eugenia created was that after Junior says, hey, what's for dinner? And it was clear that um, Nina wasn't gonna be making any dinner because they'd just eaten all day. So you got the empty plate at the end here, right? And then this image here. Like any good kid, you gotta help the grown up clean up. So Junior's doing it and it looks like he's kind of getting into it. Like they've got the jazz playing again. Cause I sort of imagine that both their hips swaying to the left is just one single moment in time and they're really dancing again, which I do recommend. If you ever join your grownups to clean up, put on some music, some music you both love. So that's it. That is jazz for lunch. Um, if you have any questions for me, tell them to your teacher and your teacher can email me. My, my email address is brownbat, B-A-T, heart. So brownbatheart at gmail.com. Any of you can email me or tell your teacher your questions and maybe your teacher will email me and I can write back to your teacher and give you some answers. So I've really loved reading to you today and thank you again for listening to my book. And if you see a copy of it out at the library or the bookstore, I hope you pick up a copy and share it with the grownups or brothers and sisters and cousins and loved ones in your lives. Thank you, bye.